Hey there, Commanders. I've uh, been thinking about this topic for a while, and this week's presented an opportunity to discuss it that uh, I feel like I need to take advantage of in the moment. I'm not sure... The problem I've had with what I'm about to show you is that it's hard to talk about because there are so many issues that are attached to it. It's one of the most baggage intensive things taking place in the game right now. A snake eating its own tail is not nutrition. And this is basically what's taking place right now. You've got people who don't want to engage in PvP blocking players who do, and at a certain point you're going to tip a critical mass where PvPers can only find each other, and there's not going to be very many of them, so they probably won't find each other very often. And the rest of the community just goes on pretending as if they don't exist. This is hard to talk about because everybody gets really pent up into a, an emotional drive towards whatever philosophy that they favor the most. Uh, the, the Care Bears, as they're often disparagingly referred to, and I don't, I don't like that name very much because it, it attempts to act as a thought-terminating cliché. Uh, something that you can say to completely dismiss an argument without considering its tenets or its precepts. Now, the, the Care Bears do the same thing when they call the entire PvP community gankers. Because not everyone in PvP is a ganker, and not everybody who hates PvP is a Care Bear. The emotional integrity of the discussion is declining. In large part because people, I think, don't realize what's actually driving these problems. And it's 100% an issue of game design. Part of the problem that PvP and Elite Dangerous has right now is that there is no economic incentive structure to provide context for these engagements. In other words, most PvP that takes place in open play is ships randomly patrolling around different high traffic systems looking for hollow squares to shoot. It's not a healthy gameplay loop because it randomizes the quote unquote violence of encounters. It means that I could be flying around in a Sidewinder and I am just as juicy a target as somebody who might be flying a Type 7. When, economically speaking, the guy in the Sidewinder would likely be ignored out of relevance because he doesn't carry anything valuable, or at least isn't carrying anything valuable, where the Type 7 might have a cargo hold full of low temperature diamonds. From a gameplay perspective, it makes sense for somebody to go after a ship like that because they could potentially steal its cargo and sell it on a black market somewhere. And that's the kind of gameplay that I wish Elite Dangerous would encourage. And I think that that kind of gameplay would happen more often if the underlying mechanics behind piracy weren't outright broken. And they've been broken for a long time. If, in case you've never engaged with piracy, let me give you the rapid rundown. When you pirate another ship, the only way that you can get their cargo is to force them to jettison it. They do that through their cargo scoop. When you jettison a large amount of cargo, the containers tend to collide with one another hard enough that they destroy each other. So if a ship jettisons a large volume of cargo, let's say 50 tons of gold, you're going to lose probably 15 to 20 tons of that stuff as it leaves the cargo hatch. It's just gone. Nobody gets to benefit at all from it. And then, assuming that both ships are maneuvering during the fight, as is not an unreasonable assumption, uh, you're going to have those cargo canisters scattered across an open void in such a way that they will drift out of radar range before the pirate can collect them all, because even when you use collector limpets, you have to come to an almost complete stop in order to successfully collect the cargo, because if you don't, the limpet smashes into the cargo hold hard enough that it blows the canister up and you don't get to collect anything. The limpet survives, but the cargo you're trying to steal doesn't, so your plunder gets trashed. In typical pirate encounters, you, you'd be lucky to walk away with half of what actually survives being jettisoned. And if that cargo isn't high value, then you go through a whole bunch of effort, you garner potentially a criminal record, and you walk away with almost nothing. So the economic incentives for players to actually pirate each other are really, really weak, and it's because the underlying mechanics for collecting that cargo are non-existent. In order to successfully collect large volumes of cargo from another ship, it has to cooperate fully with you through the entire process. And it's so difficult to get players to do that because, you know, piracy, 
that it just ends up being easier to blow them up and move on to the next ship. And then you just abandon even the pretense of piracy by equipping hatchbreaker limpets, and you just replace all of your limpets with hull reinforcements, and you go around on a big, frustrating romp. But at the same time, I also sympathize with the person hauling the cargo, because at this point, you're not even given the opportunity to pretend that it's piracy. You just get blown up, and you lose your entire cargo hold. And what? The amount of time investment it takes to complete a cargo run, you're out probably 10 or 15 minutes if you don't have a fleet carrier. And if you do, well, okay, um, you just end up faffing about in a menu for 30 or 40 seconds and try again, losing a substantial amount of credits each time, which destroys the incentive to engage with the mechanic in the first place. The underlying piracy mechanic is broken, but so are the mechanics that allow us to coordinate with one another. Because we don't have a pay friend or a player contract manager, we don't have the ability to create or incentivize interactions between that same theoretical Type 7 and a set of PvP-focused escort ships. Since there's no way to pay players for their efforts, what incentive do they have to engage aside from making their own fun, which is, by the way, a weak incentive. The game should reward you for playing the game. If it doesn't, then why do you play the game at all? This is why the community has been talking about, asking about these features for a long time. If we had a pay friend button and we had a player contract manager, then we have a system for structuring agreements, for coordinating the allocation of player created available resources, and we have a structure for rewarding players for providing those resources. I would love, absolutely love it, if I could outfit my cargo-oriented Type 9 with a ton of cargo racks and one big shield generator and then hire two players to escort me into a CG and open play. That right there is your incentive for emergent gameplay. That right there provides the context and the reason for everybody to be in the same place. But for it to work, you have to be able to effectively transcribe wins and losses. And by the way, doing that incentivizes the pirates to group together too. If you fixed these mechanic sets, you would have wings of players fighting each other for the cargo in their respective ships, and the pirates would need to bring a cargo ship to haul away all the plunder, by the way. But to do that effectively, of course, you need a way to disable ships, and once they're disabled, assuming that flight assist is off, you need a way to slow them down enough that you can complete a docking maneuver. So there's a lot of stuff that needs to get fixed before some of the mechanics that are claimed to be available actually work. And a lot of the back-end effort required to fix this stuff isn't being put up because Frontier is way too focused on Odyssey right now. They're trying to balance and create a, a market for ground interactions when the space interactions and a lot of the economic underlying subsystems are still not working properly. And it's creating an incredible amount of discordance that isn't going away. It's getting worse. And that's driving a lot of the content creators in the Elite Dangerous community out into other games because it's so frustrating to try and deal with that the only thing you can do is just throw your hands up and take a break under a best case scenario. And I've taken two long breaks from Elite Dangerous. I took a break after Odyssey when it came out over the summer, and I took a break before that when the game was in maintenance mode. You, you can't survive that for very long as a developer. If your players are actively just leaving because they can't deal with your, with the way that you're building the game, then at, at a certain point, they leave and they don't come back. This is why I harp on Star Citizen so much, because they're so perfectly positioned in the ecosystem of space sims to be the apex sim. Elite Dangerous right now has, I would say, the most complete game in that it is technically feature complete, but there's so many features that need another balance pass, desperately. And that Star Citizen is catching up extremely quickly. And the tipping point, I think the tipping point is probably within a year or two, a year on the short side, maybe two years on the long side, after which Star Citizen is going to have the momentum advantage and Elite Dangerous is going to get ditched. I don't think the game will die. I just think that it will get relegated and it won't, it won't ever be considered the, the premium experience that it once was. And, and I don't have a good solution for it. I mean, I think that Frontier 
really, really need to have a roadmap for the community to comment on so that we have some input on how things get structured and prioritized. I don't know if Frontier will ever actually give us that, that ability. I hope that they do. I think that it would vastly improve relationship with the community and that it's worth whatever manpower hours have to be thrown at it in order to build. We're not asking for the farm. We're just asking for a general direction. You get on a cruise ship, you're allowed to know the destination. I'm not entirely sure that we know what the destination is with Odyssey. Sure, ground game, but why? Elite Dangerous had its best value proposition in Horizons as probably one of the best space sims in terms of flight mechanics. And that's not to say that they're perfect. I think that the flight systems all need some adjustments to better realize their potential, but I don't know. At that point, we just get off into the weeds. And I worry about it because I don't want Elite Dangerous to fail. I, I enjoy playing this game. I don't want the thousands of hours I've invested in it to basically just turn to ashes in my hands and float away. But at the same time, I'm not going to commit myself to a sinking ship. If Star Citizen becomes the better game, I'm going to go and play the better game. Which, I don't know, I'm worried that it's going to be, and quickly. So, I don't know. At this point... I think I've said that all, all I can say in this video without jumping off into individual topics. So uh, uh, keep an eye out for some follow-ups. I'm planning on discussing some of these other topics and mechanics in greater detail going forward as part of my Improving Elite series. Um, and for now, I guess uh, that's all I got. So I'll catch you guys later.